Hello, dear friends. We are sincerely happy to welcome you again. Today we will talk to the esteemed Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. Greetings. Igor Mikhailovich, thank you very much for expanding on the topic of catharsis during the previous conversation, including all the peculiarities, nuances and details which definitely help a person to use this tool skillfully and to avoid all the traps and snares set by the system on the spiritual path and, of course, most importantly, to achieve one's goal of saving life of gaining life. Igor Mikhailovich, in the previous video you said that when a person gains life, he becomes a spiritually free human, and such a person seriously changes the system's plans, interferes and causes much trouble to the system because he breaks the system's scenario regarding himself, regarding his near and dear people, and regarding those people who hear him. Therefore, Igor Mikhailovich, I would like to begin with the first question that we received. What to do if a person hasn't actually gained life and hasn't become spiritually free yet, but he follows the spiritual path, he is aware of himself as personality, he certainly feels that there is progress on the spiritual path and God's love is multiplying inside. But because of his inexperience, in a certain period of his lifetime he invested a lot of attention in negative scenarios that were imposed by the system. And as we know, if one has already made a prepayment, one should certainly wait for the goods to be delivered. So the question is the following, how to deactivate those scenarios of the system and, let's say, is it possible to actually postpone the delivery of those goods, to cancel this delivery? So to cancel or to postpone? It's better to cancel, of course. And can a person who hasn't gained life yet but merely follows the path he surely can. do that? As a matter of fact, friends, there is nothing complicated about this. It doesn't matter what goods you purchased and what you paid for. But now you decide whether to accept it or not. If a person embarks on the spiritual path, well, we are not saying that he plays around, we are saying that he really embarks, then everything changes in his life. As long as a person is like a leaf on the water, in the river, so to say, and the river of life steers him the way it wants, plus the headwind or the sidewind carries him where it wants, well, there is no point in talking about such a person, as they say. Everything is predetermined for him. The devil has designed his entire life for him. He doesn't live. Demons live in his head. This is true. But when a person swims like a fish wherever he wants in this river, like a healthy, strong fish, he sees the goal and doesn't notice the obstacles. What kind of deliveries can we talk about, right? In fact, during our lifetime, if we live a standard human life, we are far from spirituality, we are in slavery of our own consciousness, it lives instead of us. We don't even realize that consciousness isn't us. After all, for many people it very often becomes a dramatic discovery when they encounter for the first time that consciousness simply manipulates them. And then, it is certainly a shock for a person when for the first time he encounters that consciousness is something strange and inexplicable. Whereas when he lives without awareness, everything is sort of fine, right? Under dictation, I want this, I want that, I do what I want. We rarely recall God, and only when the situation is bad. Whereas if a person feels an inner need, real spiritual need, if he feels the affinity, aspiration and desire when his goal becomes to gain life and everything else becomes secondary, then after embarking on the spiritual path, when he goes towards the goal with resolute step, everything changes. The person becomes invisible to Satan, uncontrollable by him. And here, of course, the person is unprofitable for the system itself. But on the other hand, he gains freedom. The person gains. Well, I'll even put it this way, he must gain freedom on the spiritual path before he is able to gain life. It won't work any other way. These are certain stages. First, a person steps over Satan, gains freedom, understanding, and then his fusion with life occurs 
so to speak. Naturally, if a person has stepped over Satan and escaped from Satan's manipulations and control, he understands what happens to him, what thoughts come to him, why and what for, as well as what consequences they may cause. He can no longer be manipulated. As for what some people say that they strove for certain things during their life, they invested a lot of attention, and now this can overtake them. It can. If we remain in the same old positions, exactly in those positions when we desired that, right? It is necessary to change the address. 100%, from the dead to the alive, and everything will improve, friends. It's very easy. Here's another question, Igor Mihailovich. Is it correct to think in this context that when a person advances along the spiritual path, the system actually spends more power to overcome this spiritual barrier of the person and to impose a thought on him? In such a case, it might seem that the following formula works. The further you advance on the spiritual path, the more power the system invests to get through to you. And by squeezing the mosquito out, with each step you redirect that power more and more and invest it in your spiritual development. Is that really the case? I'll put it this way. When a person embarks on the spiritual path, that's where the most interesting thing starts. A person really starts to be attacked by the system. Precisely here it invests the most power at the initial stage. But if a person passes this with dignity, if he goes further and gains certain spiritual power, the devil gets weaker, and he has less and less power moments. However, friends, there is a danger here. Temptations appear. And this is also very serious. The temptations from Satan are much stronger than an intrusive thought than simply a desire or something else. You know, I'll give a comparison. You are on a diet, and someone brings you cakes, as if on purpose. Who hasn't been through that, except the one who hasn't suffered from being overweight, let's say, right? I mean, temptations are something much stronger, whereas simple, typical routine issues, when some thought about someone or something else comes in, to take away your attention, which you are directing towards the spiritual world and redirect it towards empty things, let's say, just to squeeze you out like a mosquito, so to speak. Then this trick, the farther a person advances, the less it works out. Yet, does the system waste more power? No, it doesn't. I'll say once again, it spends more power at the initial stage, when it is much easier to destabilize a person, to push him down, drive him into doubts, false perceptions, or whatever. Why? Because we said it more than once, we'll repeat it. What is a human? A human is an asset of the system. It is its investment, which will bring dividends to the system, right? Of course, no one wants to lose. Imagine, friends, for example, you've invested money in a bank, it is supposed to grow, bring you income, and then suddenly the bank closes. Well, it is kind of a pity, isn't it? And no one pays you back. So, a person who has embarked on the spiritual path firmly, and who has a goal and aspires towards it, is for that very system, like a bank which closes. Of course, it's not interesting for the system. Will it fight? It will. But temptations are a scary thing. We've told about them more than once. And indeed, people who stood firmly on the spiritual path, when they encountered paranormal manifestations, some skills that people also picked up, like prophecies, predictions, or some… many tricks, let's not list them. People were tempted. Why? Because every one of us is a hunter for other people's attention, for us, for any human being, I emphasize. Someone else's attention is very important, not an opinion. Attention is what is important. And naturally we strive to collect as much of that attention as we can. Yet when people start paying attention to us because some extraordinary ability is suddenly manifested in us, it is very tempting. And sometimes a person doesn't even notice how 
Instead of a straight path, he swerves and already walks through a dark forest, not knowing where, being led by shaitan. This is also true. He relaxes. Of course he relaxes. Humans. Other people's attention, you know, this is attractive. As you said, when a person is with God, demons are somewhere in the periphery. A hundred percent. So it turns out that an intrusive thought comes at the moment when a person weakens the spiritual shield? Absolutely right. When he starts thinking more about himself than about God, when he strives to do something better for himself and not for the spiritual world, that's when he becomes weak. There is also another question, Igor Mikhailovich. We actually still live in the consumerist format of society, not in the creative society. Many people work even more than 12 hours a day, and they can perform spiritual practice not five times a day, but, for example, twice a day, in the morning and in the evening. And, of course, that's where consciousness enters the arena and immediately tells a person, well, if you cannot perform spiritual practice even five times a day for 30 minutes, then you are definitely doomed. How can we comment on such situations in people's lives? I'll put it as follows. If you, my friend, listen to such thoughts and accept them, then you are doomed. Right? Actually, everything is very simple. Nobody cancels dynamic practices. What does it mean? It means that a person should be in a state of spiritual contact all the time and should not lose it. And here it is extremely important, regardless of what you do and what your job is, whether you are a cook or a neurosurgeon, when you perform a surgery, even a difficult one, if you see that you invest more attention in what you do than in God's love, it's enough to stop for 30 seconds. 30 seconds do not solve anything, but it is more than enough to dive inside yourself. You can do that very lotus practice or that very deep prayer speaking the language of religion, in order to restore this dialogue with God. This is very simple. And then you can continue your work when the contact is restored. For everyone else, you will be thinking about your next action. Nothing will happen within 30 seconds. Well, you should certainly choose a situation properly. If you are a chef, some dish of yours is burning, and you would fall into meditation for 30 seconds or a minute, well, you should choose a proper time. But everything is simple, in fact. Or again, a person performs a surgery, a very complicated and serious one. The life of the person he is operating on depends on him. But his own life is also important, isn't it? And again, with whom will he continue this surgery? If he goes off the spiritual path and breaks the connection with the Holy Spirit, shaitan will immediately come. The place is never empty. With whom do you want to perform that very surgery, my friend? Under the guidance of shaitan or being guided by the Holy Spirit? In which case will your patient benefit more? There is a deep meaning here too. After all, the Holy Spirit is always there to help. As for shaitan, his goal and task is to shake and destabilize you, to ensure that you do the wrong thing, that you make a mistake, then you will worry about your mistake, because shaitan will actually be the one to blame you, saying that you made the mistake. Although he is the one who instigated you, however, he doesn't control your hands. He only created a desire for you. He merely gave you stupid advice, but you accepted it. So you are to blame. Look at how simple everything is. It's the same in life. What we are guided by and whom we go along with, if we go along with the Holy Spirit, then no matter how hard the path is, it is for us like the most pleasant walk with the being who loves you the most in the world. But if we go along with shaitan, the easiest path turns into a scary and hard one, eventually leading to a precipice. Isn't that so? Everything is simple, but it is us who choose, my friends. Not someone chooses for us, right? At this point, 
The meaning of the choice is extremely important, and the choice occurs to us. Well, as many thoughts come to us, just as many choices occur to us. But don't people really know that? They do. And even when they know, and even when they're on a spiritual path, sometimes thoughts still come in. And that's normal. It is very important here that those thoughts do not take control over you, right? That's what these one-minute stops are for. Yes, it's clear that performing 30-minute practices or deep prayers five times a day, this is great. It really takes a person to a completely different level of perception. A person feels much easier, calmer, and more confident on the spiritual path. However, we indeed live in the consumerist format. Not all of us have enough time. There is bustle, work, responsibility for children, for the elderly, and whatnot. There are plenty of problems. This is where dynamic practice comes to the rescue. It doesn't matter if you are busy or not, you can always find half a minute or a minute to restore this spiritual connection. And it's even better not to lose it. For example, you have an opportunity, let's say, to perform the practice two times a day, as you said, in the morning and in the evening. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing you should think about as you wake up is God's love, how strong your contact with the spiritual world is. After you've done the practice and strengthened the contact, you keep it up all day long without weakening it, no matter what. When you feel that you've cooled down a little bit, warm yourself up and move on. In the evening, before going to bed, do the practice again. And the best option is to fall asleep right through the practice, to perform the practice first, and then to go to bed. And while continuing this practice, fall into sleep. Otherwise, many people will quickly fall asleep and the practice won't be intense. That's why the correct thing to do is to perform the practice and then, as a continuation, to proceed into sleep from it. Then, as they say, after you become filled with God's love, it isn't scary to sleep, right? Igor Mikhailovich, thank you so much. You just mentioned such professions as a surgeon or a cook, but sometimes there are situations when it would seem athletes come out to spar and their mood is not quite constructive, so to say, and yet this is… I'll put it this way. When we engaged in sports, we trained guys and we ourselves took part in many sports competitions. I won't speak for myself, but judging by the guys we trained, there was a huge difference between those who were on the spiritual path and those who were just pretending, playing around, so to speak, in order to be with us. Yes, a person was as if on the path, but you could actually see whether a person was alive or striving for life, or he was simply controlled by a demon. And the difference was enormous. What was the difference? I'll give you a simple example. Our guys who, let's say, received even basic training during four or five years, competed against athletes who, just to make it clear, a rookie athlete against a master of sports, and the rookie athlete won. Why? Because he was calm and spiritualized. Whereas masters of sports, with ten or more years of experience, came to the competition and became weaker. And there is one phenomenon here. Well, those who are involved in serious sports understand what I'm talking about. I mean, a person is training, he has spent 10 years of his life training his body, developing reflexes and many other things. But when he is in a real sparring, not a training session, but a real competition, then he becomes all stiff. Responsibility. Yes, and coaches also often drill an athlete to boost his hormones a little bit, to fuel his ardor. But what happens, in fact? Consciousness is narrowed. And a person, let's say, who is a master of sports with 10 years of experience, becomes, I don't know, as a rookie with three years of experience. He has no skill, nothing. All they have is the reflex they have trained, and a hope that it will work out somewhere. 
Well, this is true. Let's even look at ordinary power moments, speed, contact force, let's put it carefully. After all, they are much weaker during competitions than during training in that very gym. Why? Because in the gym a person feels safe and relaxed, even if there is a training sparring, but he understands that it's all a game. Whereas at a competition he comes out with full responsibility, an equally determined opponent is in front of him, and they already face each other. You know, it was fun to watch. Well, in boxing it is more or less okay, it's all somehow based on reflexes, while in martial arts it was very interesting. When a person comes out and there is an impression that he forgets everything, you see, there's neither skill nor anything, it's simply some kind of a street fight. Yes, that's already a street fight. Well, it's another thing when masters come out. They're spiritualized, they are calm, their every move is perfect, there is nothing superfluous, and they are calm. A master does not care whether he wins or loses. But here again, of course, training plays a role, spiritual, so to say. and. Spiritual training, I would say, is much more important. Why? Because people cling to spirituality much more. For them it's the real goal. Whereas for many people, when they are in sports, their goal is to win, to become someone, to make a name. While our guys never tried to make a name or something else. Sport was like a physical activity and, let's say, an opportunity to test themselves in competitions, nothing more. A challenge for oneself. Right. It was especially interesting during Kumite fights. Well, for those who know, according to the old traditions, there all this is actually manifested in a very serious way. You know, again, when you go to spar, let's say, in boxing, yes, there are risks, there is a danger, but you understand perfectly well that there is medical aid, there is a referee, and everything is somehow, you know, sort of refined and relatively safe. But then again, you have a certain skill, and the fight is still safe. There are safety measures. Accidents do happen, but accidents happen even to chess players. So anything can happen here, right? But when there are more serious competitions, let's say, those dating back to body dharma, then it all becomes much more interesting and manifests much better. Well, I would say, at those competitions, the majority of those who come out to spar are people who at least firmly stand on the spiritual path with a deep understanding of completely different aspects of our existence than commonplace athletes usually have. That's why there is no foolishness there, and it never turns into a street fight. But that's a separate topic. Nevertheless, this indicates that spiritual practices actually help everywhere, irrespective of your profession, whether you are in sports or you are a surgeon, it doesn't matter. And you know what's interesting? I think spiritual practices would help astronauts very much. After all, when they find themselves in those situations, yes, psychologists work with them and everything else, but people who have been to outer space experience things which psychologists cannot even imagine. Astronauts have to wriggle out and sort of tell not quite true things about their subjective sensations and their condition in general, in order to have another chance to fly there again. In outer space a person really experiences a greater freedom of personality and a lot of what we attribute to mysticism actually begins to happen to them. That's interesting. So astronauts, first and foremost, should hold tightly to God, then there would be a benefit. Just imagine to use the opportunities in one's profession for one's spiritual growth. This is wonderful. Right. Even the information which you've just voiced is very surprising and amazing, how much spiritual development influences a person's performance. It influences everything. You gave an example about those 10 years that the person had practiced, but he came right. out like… like an athlete with three years of experience. Three years. Is lost. Right. 70% of productivity is stolen by the system if you're in panic, if you're in a narrowed state of consciousness. Those are wasted years of life, as it turns out. Again, I'll put it this way. We've seen a lot of cases, for example, those who are into boxing. We've watched a lot of fights, friends, 
who haven't watched, watch them. When a person comes out determined for a fight, in our usual layman's understanding, and when a person comes out being absolutely calm, I mean, you can see right away who will win. You see, you don't even have to place any bets. They've just stepped into the ring. They have almost identical levels of training, I mean physical level, skills, titles and all that. But depending on how calm a person is and how much a person is, let's say, worried, sort of, under the pressure of responsibility, you can immediately see who will overpower. And as a rule, well, this happens almost always, with rare exceptions. Why? Because sport is sport, and in sport this is completely unpredictable. Even a world champion, let's say, may lose to a street kid who has never boxed. Why? An accident. In sport, especially in this kind of sport, an accident can be decisive. That's why it is interesting. Likewise in life, how important spiritual development is, in fact. Of course. How much it should be a priority. It should be. For every person. For every person. There is nothing more important than life. And that's the most important thing, friends. You shouldn't forget that. Everything in this world is transient. But if we do not gain life, then there is no point in our existence. And our subsequent existence will be sad, but it is us who shape it. Therefore, everything depends on us. And we should start, friends, with loving each other. Thank you. Thank you so much, Igor Mikhailovich. Thank you, friends. Peace be with you.